What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to work on turning this $30 Facebook Marketplace smoker into a powder coating oven. Let's get started. So I'm trying to do this as budget friendly as possible. So leave some comments down below. Let me know how much you think this initial investment's going to be. Like I said, I've already been pricing stuff out. I got some stuff on order and I'm trying to keep it as budget friendly as possible. So with that in mind, let's get started. So before I start tearing this thing down, let's see exactly what $30 got me. As you can see, this is a master built adventure series. And according to the label, which is on the other side, I believe it has a 1500 watt heating element or burner in there, which that along with the heat gauge here says it should get down to 400 degrees, get down should heat up to 400 degrees, which is basically what you want for powder coating. So, like I said, this was $30. All right, guys, so let's take a look on the inside. She was definitely used, well-loved. Um, let me bring you in a little bit here. So you can see this thing definitely needs a good cleaning, but all the racks are there. This is the heating element. So it's got, you know, different adjustable racks. All three racks are there, plus this other one for holding, like the wood chips and stuff like that. I've never used a smoker, so yeah, I don't know. There's some other work besides, obviously, like I said, cleanup that's going to need to get done. Up on the back there is a hole. I'm going to weld that up. And same on the bottom, there's like a drip hole right there. So I'm going to weld that up also just to get this thing sealed up to keep all the heat in. I also plan on pretty much gutting this thing, tear it apart. I'm gonna take the door panel off. I'm gonna take the inside panel off because if you've never worked with one of these smokers, there's no insulation in there. It's hollow. It's just, you got the outer shell and the inner shell. There's nothing else in there. So I'm gonna insulate this thing to help, help it maintain the heat, help it get up to maybe some, a little bit higher temperature, but also, like I said, to help maintain that heat. So the door comes off, it's got lifted off the hinges. I'm going to take everything out. First thing I'm going to do, obviously, is work on cleaning everything up. I mean, this thing, it's uh, in dire need of cleaning. So that'll be the first step.
Morning guys. So I pretty much spent the remainder of yesterday getting this thing all cleaned up. You saw that I tore it all down and then I just kind of spent a few rounds of soaking this thing with some of that purple power degreaser, sprayed it down with the hose, scrubbed on it and got it ready for today. Um, what I also did was I had to make some adjustments to the legs. Not really that important, but I just kind of had to cut them and angle them in a little bit to get them to fit in the area where I want to store this thing. No big deal. Um, I'm probably going to make a tray for the bottom at some point and put this thing on caster so I can roll it around the garage. But that'll be after I get done what I want to do today. And that's going to be insulating this thing. So for insulation, first thing I picked up was a door seal. So this right here, this one handed, is just a stick on door seal. It's a high temp door seal meant for smokers. And that'll just go around the perimeter of the door just to help seal that up. The main thing that I wanted was this. So this is ceramic fiber blanket. This is by Link Manufacturing and this stuff is rated to like 2300 degrees or something like that. So this stuff is quarter inch thick and this is like, what size is this? 240, this is 16 inches with by 240 inches long. My goal, my plan is that I'm gonna be able to take that. And I think I wanted like half inch, but I couldn't really find a half inch in a, in a big enough roll for the cost that I wanted. So I got the quarter inch, it just worked out. Now, so I'll probably double that up. So I'm gonna put two layers probably along the sides, the back, on the top piece, and then on the underside of the bottom. So I'm just gonna get started kind of measuring and cutting for the ceramic blanket. Now, I've seen where people have used like pink household insulation, um, and I looked it up and it's supposedly good for like a thousand degrees, which this oven's gonna, not gonna get anywhere near that. But at the same time, it also has warnings about not having it directly up against a heat source. And you know, these walls are gonna get, you know, 400, 420 degrees or so. So I was kind of hesitant to use that. I know I've seen other people use it. Um, if you have experience using the pink insulation, household insulation, let me know how it worked out for you. Leave some comments down below. I'm, I'm curious, is the cost savings worth it? Or did you have problems with the pink insulation? I thought there might be issues. That's why I went with the ceramic blanket. Let's get installing it. So I figure I'll start with the door. This should be the easiest section to, to get used to working with this stuff. Like I said, I've never worked with this stuff before, so I have no idea what it's like. Um, so that's why I'm wearing gloves. I don't know if this stuff's an irritant or not, like pink insulation. So just be on the safe side. So the door cavity is what? 12 and a half or so by, get up underneath, by six, which is perfect. 16 and a half, it looks like maybe, maybe just a shy little bit under. So I'm just gonna cut a piece off here. And then I'm gonna have to notch it for for around these pieces here. So it might have been a little long. Just fine, because I want to take some of the scrap pieces and put it up like through this area here. There we go. So it's the first piece. Like I said, now you can see there's room for a second. That's why I wanted the half inch thick stuff. But I got what I got. So I'm just gonna keep rolling, making this stuff work. All right, so there's the completed door. Again, it's two layers of the quarter inch ceramic fiber blanket. Now I can reattach the inside door panel. And this, to reattach it, I'm just gonna use some eighth inch rivets and replace the ones that were drilled out.
And there we go, guys. The door is all back together like nothing even happened. Now to get started on the inside. All right, so when it comes to doing the inside, it's pretty much the same as the door. Um, I do need to do the back and the walls first. That way, once those are done, then the inside walls can go back in because the top actually rivets through the side and back wall to help hold the top on. So the inside has to get done first, then I can put the top back on, and then I can insulate the top and the bottom. And there's the inside. Again, two layers of that insulation. Now, I did use a couple pieces. This is like aluminized tape. It's meant for like duct work and stuff like that. I just used a couple small pieces just to hold this up in place. But now I'm ready to go ahead and insert the inside. All right, so getting the inside shell back in place was a little tricky. Um, I ended up having to use the mounting screws right here. Let's see if I can focus on that. Using these screws right here, which is what hold the, the shelf rack or the shelf mounts in place. So I ended up using these to kind of get everything aligned, hold the side in place because it does, the front does slip behind the lip here. So you gotta make sure that slides in there. But once, you know, you get these screw holes aligned, get those, and those pretty much slide right into place, a little flat tip screwdriver or a little pry bar or something to spread it open a little bit, gets it all back together. The back sits in there well. Now I just gotta rivet it all back into place. When it comes to the top, I inverted the inside portion of the top. You can see this is all charred up. This was actually supposed to be facing the inside, but I flipped it over and then that gives me this recessed area for insulation. And then I just sealed the seam up with some more of that aluminized tape. So now I can add the insulation and put the top on. So when it comes to insulating the bottom, it's gonna be pretty much the same as the top. I'm just gonna take out these cross pieces that held the drip tray and then I'll insulate the bottom. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna put the cross members back in to hold it in or if I'm gonna create like a sheet metal bottom for this. I'll see how these do first and then if I think it needs more support, then I'll create a, a sheet metal bottom. All right, so there's the bottom insulation. Uh, I think those cross members are gonna work out just fine. If need be, like I said, I'll build a, build a plate for the bottom. Now what I wanna do is add some casters. So I have this old Harbor Freight furniture dolly. So I think I'm just gonna blast the casters off this thing and weld them up onto there. And there we go, guys. Everything is back together. Casters are on. Not the greatest casters, but they'll work. Now all I gotta do is hang the door and put the weather stripping around the door. There it is, guys. It is time to fire this thing up. Now, in all honesty, all transparency, I don't even know if this thing works. Never tested it. Um, but before I went and bought it, I did kind of price out replacement parts in case it doesn't work. Like the controller here. This thing, I can get it on like Amazon or whatever, 25, 30 bucks, something like that. I mean, this one, the temperature gauge thing, settings, yeah, non-existent. No idea. I'm just going to turn it up all the way and see what happens. Same with the burner or the, you know, the heating element that could be replaced relatively cheap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this thing in and uh, see if this thing even turns on. I have no clue. And once it does, I'm going to check the temperature, compare the inside temperature with the reading on the gauge. And I'm also going to time it to see how long it takes to get up to 400 degrees or so. So, let me go plug this thing in and uh, get it turned on. All right, everything's plugged in. Got my stopwatch ready to go. I'm gonna turn this thing, let me get that off there just in case. Um, I'm just gonna crank this thing up to high, start the stopwatch and uh, see how long this thing takes to heat up, if it even works. No clue. I just heard a click. I'll be back. 
guess I should have paid more attention mounting the mount the temp gauge. It's a little, a little cockeyed. But you can see two minutes in, maybe you can see that. I don't know. Two minutes in, we're crossing the 100 degree setting. So I'll be back. Four and a half minutes in or so, and we're crossing 200 degrees. Now, this thing, it's 200 degrees inside. This thing is, I mean, it's warm, but not really. I mean, a couple spots, 89 degrees, 88 there. The sides are the same. The temp, the top, same. I mean, this thing is now along the bottom, it's getting a little warmer. It's 110 down here, 109, right along the bottom of the door. Um, but for the most part, most of this thing is ambient. I mean, the edge of the door here is 94. So, I mean, there are some warm spots, but right now, you know, it's 225, 230 on the inside, and this is still ambient temperature. This has turned out pretty good so far. I'll be back. Hopefully you guys can see that nine minutes and we are just over 300 degrees and uh, still going. All right, we're coming up on the 350 mark. And so around the heating element, you can see some smoke around the controller and a little bit up here, like around the corner of the doors, but no big deal. Um, the top, it's starting to get a little warm. I mean, it's, if I can show you there, 98 degrees, whereas the front door is 98 degrees, losing my stool. Ah. Let's go around to the back side here and have a look. 97, 98. I mean, it's warm in spots, but it is not, down here is a little bit warmer, 110. Yeah, but it's not bad. I mean, it's not like it's gonna really burn you. It's warm, don't get me wrong. Now the spot, whoop. Now the bottom frame under here, that is really warm. This right here, I mean, you can see is 200 and something degrees. The insulation is doing its job. I mean, there's some spots where, you know, obviously I couldn't get insulation or whatever, but overall, it's doing really good. Um, just passing like 360 or so. So again, I'll check back when I'm at 400 degrees. All right guys, so that initial temperature test, initial turn on failed. Well, it didn't really fail. It just didn't get as hot as it needs to. So it failed. And that also do with the temperature, the, the controller, more specifically the temperature probe here on the controller. You know, obviously you turn this up to your desired temperature. In my case, it was just gonna be all the way up. And the temperature probe, this is what turns power on and off based on the temperature. This just, uh, this just does, doesn't allow it to get hot enough. So I ran a little test. I bypassed the temperature probe. And then I did another test. So that got up hot enough, way hot enough. But the problem is I can't control it. It's just gonna continue to heat up. I can't keep it around that 420 degree range or any temperature range based on whatever powder I wanna use. I have to be able to control that temperature. So this is gonna go and I'm gonna geek out a little bit. I picked up a PID, which basically allows me to set the temperature and there's a solid state relay also. And that's what actually is gonna turn the power on and off. That's what actually is gonna close the circuit. The PID itself can't handle the load, so you need a solid state relay. Um, there are plenty of other videos on how to put one of these things together, but I'm gonna wire this thing up and take it for another test drive.
All right, so as you saw, I quickly and crudely wired this thing up inside of a cardboard box. Now this is just for proof of concept, guys. Obviously, once I get all the bugs worked out, and I'm sure everything's working the way it's supposed to, this will all get installed into an actual electrical enclosure. It'll have a fused input, all that good stuff. But as you can see right now, everything is working. Currently, a temperature in the box is 414 degrees. It's set for 420. Now, when it comes to wiring this thing up, and especially setting up the PID, I'll leave that up to others. There are plenty of videos out there. Um, I probably spent more time fumbling around with the PID, the temperature controller, than I did actually wiring this thing up. It was reading weird, it was kicking out alarms, kept turning off the, the solid state relay early, but I got it all dialed in. Like I said, as you can see right now, it says it's 411 degrees. The relay is on, I don't know if you can see that light, but the relay's on, it's heating the box up. Um, obviously I have to permanently mount the thermocouple. Again, this is all just proof of concept, um, but it seems to be working. So now I am more inclined to believe the temperature on the PID on the thermal controller than I am the one on the door. Um, this thing drops really quick when you open the door, but that says the temperature in the box is 409. So I'm gonna check it. I've actually got a, just a bracket in there. One of the first pieces I'm gonna try powder, powder coating. So I've got it in there right now. I wanna see if that is the same temperature as what it says the, the temperature in the box is. This gauge is gonna drop really quick. They're both gonna drop really quick, but this one's gonna drop real fast when I open the door. So I'm gonna open the door, shoot the temperature of that bracket, compare it to what it is on the PID. So that says 467. Um, that says 410. But I'm not really sure. It says 439. It's down low near the heater, so that could have something to do with it. Yeah, so the temperature at the top of the bracket which is more like towards the center of the box, is 430. Down at the heater, it's like 468. Um, so obviously there's a big temperature discrepancy, but it is getting up the temperature. So obviously one of the things learned here is that when it comes to doing the powder coating, I'll probably try to suspend everything or have it up on the shelf up near the top where the temperature won't, won't be as, as drastic as down near the heater. That's something we'll, uh, We'll play with when we actually try powder coating something. I forgot to lay out the costs. So, the smoker, $30, Facebook Marketplace. That door seal, $9. The insulation, which what I bought, which I'll link to down below, was the exact amount that I needed. I had very little scrap left. That was $65. And the PID controller and the solid state relay came as a kit. That was another $41. So all told, $145 for a DIY powder coating oven. Not too bad. We'll give it a try, hopefully in the next video. Appreciate you for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll catch you on the next one.